Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Convergent evolution is rather common among mammals alive today. Pigs and tapirs look rather similar, as do mongoose, weasels, and perhaps most famously, the canids and hyenas. However, none of these groups are particularly closely related to each other, and have developed similar features in response to comparable ecological stimuli. If we include extinct mammals into the mix, things get even more confusing. Consider the subject of today's video, the Nimravids. These hypercarnivorous mammals were superficially very cat-like and developed enlarged saber-like canines. Not considered to belong to the true cat family Felidae, the Nimravids are generally considered to be the most basal members of the feliform carnivorans. All living carnivores evolved from a line of primitive carnivorous mammals called Miacids with the order Carnivora first becoming recognisable sometime during the Eocene, with the groups giving rise to modern dogs and cats diverging about 43 million years ago. Not all of the groups that arose from the first true carnivores left living descendants, however, and such is the case with the Nimravids. Fossils of these predators have been dated from the Middle Eocene through the Late Miocene, spanning about 33 million years. So what makes Nimravids distinct from true cats? Most Nimravids had muscular, low-slung, cat-like bodies, but with shorter legs and tails than are typical of cats. Unlike extant feliforms, the Nimravids had a different bone structure in the small bones of the ear. The middle ear of true cats is held in an external structure called an auditory bulla, which is separated by a septum into two chambers. Nimravid remains show ossified bullae with no septum, or no trace at all of the entire bulla. They are assumed to have had a cartilaginous housing of the ear mechanism. Nimravid feet were also short, indicating they walked in a plantigrade or semi-plantigrade posture as living bears do. Although sometimes referred to as false saber-toothed cats, these animals were highly diverse in terms of body size and ecological niche. Some Nimravids evolved into large, toothed, cat-like forms with massive, flattened upper canines. Some had dentition similar to modern felids, with smaller canines in comparison. Others had moderately increased canines in a more intermediate relationship. The upper canines were not only shorter, but were also more conical than those of the true saber-toothed cats. Not only did Nimravids exhibit diverse dentition, but they also showed the same diversity in size and morphology as cats today. Some were leopard-sized, others the size of lions and tigers. One genus had a short, rounded skull and canine similar to a cheetah, while Nanosmilus was only about the size of a small bobcat. Nimravids appeared in the middle of the Eocene about 40 million years ago, and seem to have evolved in Asia before spreading to North America in the late Eocene and to Europe in the early Oligocene. The global climate at this time was warm and wet, but was trending cooler and drier towards the late Eocene. The lush forests of the time were transforming towards a scrub and open woodland system. This climatic trend continued in the Oligocene, and Nimravid evidently flourished here. North America and Asia were connected and shared much related fauna. Europe in the Oligocene was more of an archipelago than a continent, though some land bridges must have existed, for Nimravids also spread there. In the Miocene, the fossil record suggests that many animals suited for living in forest or woodland were replaced by grazers suited for grassland. This suggests that much of North America and Asia became dominated by savannah. Nimravids disappeared along with the woodlands, but survived in relictual humid forests in Europe until the late Miocene. When conditions ultimately changed there, the last Nimravids disappeared about 9 million years ago. However, it was during the humid conditions of the Eocene that the group got its start. The most basal genus of Nimravids so far known is Malphelis from the late Eocene of China. Unlike North America and Europe, Asian representatives of this family were traditionally poorly understood. Paleontologists have known Nimravids were there, but the beasts have only been represented by meagre fragments. A nearly complete skull found in China has changed that. The cranium, found in China's Maoming Basin, is the first ever found in Asia. 
Compared to its relatives though, Malphelius was only just beginning the development of sabre teeth. The predator's fangs were not quite so flattened and blade-like as others of its kind, and the carnival probably didn't have as wide a gape as more specialised sabre tooths. The archaic nature of Malphelius might mean that Nimravids got their start in Asia. Maybe Malphelius represents the early days of irradiation that eventually spread through the woodlands of Europe and North America. The next most basal genera were Cystataxa, Nimravus, and Dinylurus, both native to North America from the late Eocene to the late Oligocene. Nimravus was about 1.2 meters in body length, roughly the size of a small leopard. With its sleek body, it may have resembled the modern caracal, although it had a longer back and more dog-like feet with only partially retractable claws. It probably hunted birds and small mammals, ambushing them like modern cats rather than chasing them down. Its close relative, Dinylurus, was adapted rather differently. The animal had a skull extremely broad for its length and had conical teeth. It exhibited little or no development of saber-tooth features, and had more rounded cheek teeth with no serrated edges. It had a relatively gracile skeleton, which, when combined with a short face and large nostrils, indicates a somewhat cheetah-like niche for Dinylurus. Some genera, such as Eophilus, were endemic to Europe during the Oligocene and Miocene. Two species of this genus are known, Eophilus edwardsi and Eophilus giganteus. The former was a small ambush predator, somewhat like a clouded leopard in terms of size, while the latter was huge, more comparable to a lion. Living alongside Eophilus in the humid forests of Europe was the gargantuan Quercilurus, possibly the largest Nimravid so far described, as its fossils suggest it was similar in size to a modern-day brown bear and was scansorial. It was very muscular, possessed a plantigrade posture, and was the apex predator in its environment, likely hunting large ungulates by ambush. Other Nimravids possessed very wide ranges, such as the intercontinental Pogonodon, which inhabited a broad swathe of land stretching from Ukraine to the southern United States. Clearly, the ecosystems across this area, which consisted of open, scrubby woodland and savanna, were to this predator's liking. A close relative, Denictis felina, was one of the last Nimravids to survive outside of Europe, living in North America until the early Miocene. Denictis had a sleek body 1.1 meters long, short legs, and with only incompletely retractable claws, powerful jaws, and a long slim tail. The shape of its skull is reminiscent of a feline, rather than that of an extremely short skull of the Macarodontines. Compared with those of the more recent true saber-toothed cats, its upper canines were relatively small, but they nevertheless distinctly protruded from its mouth. Denictis walked in a plantigrade manner, unlike modern felids. It would have looked like a small leopard, and evidently its mode of life was similar, being an adaptable ambush hunter. It was probably not so particular about its food as its more derived relatives, since the reduction of its teeth was still in the early stages. Despite this, in its own environment, it would have been a powerful predator, as attested by the long fossil history of the genus stretching from the late Eocene to the early Miocene. The most derived of all Nimravids were the Hoplophenae, containing two genera, Nanosmilus and Hoplophonius. Nanosmilus was, as its name suggests, the smallest member of the group, and coincidentally was also the smallest saber-toothed carnivoran of all time. The animal was about the size of a modern lynx, possessed large eyes suggestive of a nocturnal lifestyle, and despite its small size, Nanosmilus was more than capable of killing animals as large as a modern domestic pig or deer, indicating it was already a specialist at hunting animals much larger than itself. Its close relative Hoplophonius was significantly larger, being the size of a large male leopard or female lion and weighing up to 160 kilograms. Of all Nimravids, it was this genus that most closely resembled the famous later Macarodontine felid, such as Smilodon. In some species, such as Hoplophonius sicarius, the upper canines were among the longest of all Nimravids and were supported by a downward-turning flange on the lower jaw. 
an adult specimen of Hoplophonius discovered in the Badlands National Park of South Dakota was found to have bite marks on the skull from teeth of another adult individual of Hoplophonius. From examination of the wounds, it was found that the animal had been wounded by its rival's sabre teeth. Regrowth of bone around the injuries showed that the animal survived the attack. Similar finds also revealed that such fights were likely commonplace among Nimravids, and that they would often aim for the back of the skulls or the eyes of their opponents. Cubs and adolescents have also been discovered, and examinations of their skeletons indicate that their sabre teeth emerged late in life, suggesting the animals were dependent on their mothers for a relatively long period. The milk teeth of the animal, upon their eruption, were large enough to allow it to hunt effectively. The added advantage of these milk sabres was that because of the late growth of the permanent teeth, if the milk sabres were damaged, the Nimravid had a chance to grow a new set of sabre teeth, allowing it to continue hunting. Interestingly, recent studies have shown that the once recognised genus U. Smilus is invalid and actually belongs within Hoplophonius. Despite their evident success, the Nimravids eventually succumbed to extinction. It appears that their decline began in Asia, possibly due to the spread of more open savanna ecosystems there during the Oligocene. Indeed, Asian Nimravid remains from this period are notably rare in comparison to those of North America and Europe. Also, by the late Oligocene, the very first true cats were making their appearance in Asia, such as Proilurus. In North America, Nimravids disappeared during the early Miocene, likely in response to drying environmental conditions and the arrival of felids from Asia. It would be in Europe that these animals would last the longest, with the humid subtropical forests there providing a refuge of sorts from the encroaching plains spreading across Miocene Eurasia. The genus Eophilus survived here until the later Miocene, but when conditions began to change by the end of the period, the Nimravids would finally be pushed into extinction. Today, niches inhabited by these carnivores are occupied by felids, but that does not take away from the extraordinary success of the Nimravids, which were the first carnivorans to pioneer a cat-like predatory lifestyle. Although not as well known as the true saber-toothed cats, I think this group is in need of some broader recognition. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll be back next week with some more speculative evolution content, so until then, see you again soon. Cheerio.